Circle of Fifths Magic. How to use the Circle of Fifths for scales and modes. What is the Circle of Fifths? The Circle of Fifths is a simple yet powerful device to organize the 12 notes in our tonal music system. We divide the circle into 12 notes, exactly as in a clock, and we assign each note in the circle a note. Each note in the circle is a perfect fifth above the previous note. The perfect fifth is one of the most important intervals in music. No wonder it's called perfect. It is the second overtone to appear and is essential to a part of harmony and melody. We then choose any note as the top node, which we consider the tonic or key of the circle. So let's say we select the note C, then the circle will look like this. Since all the notes are present in a circle and all the notes are the same distance from each other, a perfect fifth apart, then the notes in the circle are always the same and in the same order regardless of which note we put on top. Usually, we will choose better enharmonic spellings as we turn the circle around to avoid double flats or double sharps. Let's turn the circle around. F, B flat, A flat. As you can see here, we have a B double flat which is correctly notated, but you want to avoid that by respelling it as an A. And there are F flat and C flat which we usually respell as natural notes. Also, you might want to respell the entire circle to show a G sharp which is an enharmonic of the A flat. Let's go back to C and look at the gray graph in the circle. This is a graph for the major scale also known as the Ionian scale. To build it, we simply join the notes that belong to the C major scale around the circle. So in the C major scale, the notes are C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And the graph of the circle is then this half circle. Right away, we see that the major scale is built by six consecutive perfect fifths. This is one of the secrets of a major scale which makes it so important in music. The major scale does not skip any fifths and that creates a powerful set. Let's listen to it. We can also look at the intervals that we get if we play the scale in ascending order. These are whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. The degrees are all major. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. If we build a chord with this scale, we get a major seventh chord. The chord tones are one, three, five, and seven, and the tensions are nine, 11, and 13. Let's listen to it. Remember that only the notes in the graph belong to the major scale, and the name or tonic of the scale is the top node in the circle, which right now is C. The grayed out notes, F sharp, D flat, A flat, E flat, and B flat, are not part of the C scale. So let's turn to the note in the circle clockwise. When we move to F, we can see how B flat now belongs to our major scale graph, while B moves out of it. This is why the key of F has one flat in the key signature, and that flat is B flat. One more turn and we are in the key of B flat. Now the E goes out and the E flat comes into the graph, and we now have two flats, B flat and E flat. Key of E flat, three flats. A flat, four flats. D flat, five flats. G flat, six flats. If we write it with the enharmonic spellings, and so on. It is important to notice how the flats will appear always in the same order, and therefore, when we write the key signatures, we always use that specific order to indicate the key of the piece. Now let's turn the circle the other way. When we move from the key of C to the key of G, then the F moves out of the graph and the F sharp comes in. So the key of G has one sharp, the F sharp. Now you can probably predict what's going to happen next. In the key of D, we get two sharps. A, three sharps, and so on. Pretty cool. That's not all. Let's now turn the graph around to see what happens. Let's lock the outside wheel to 